Hello all, welcome to the module on environmental crimes. I am Dr. Kavita Chalekil, Assistant Professor, Amity Law School, Delhi, affiliated with Indraprastha University, New Delhi. I hope you are familiar with the various topics of environmental law under the module on environment. Here we will be discussing a concept of environmental crimes, which is one of the emerging threats in environmental protection, conservation and management. An environmental crime is any deliberate or careless act that harms the environment in violation of the laws prohibiting the same. In the last few decades, there has been an increasing trend of environmental crimes and it creates link with other forms of crimes and has become a serious and growing danger for the society, its security and stability at global and local level. This module will deal with the topic environmental crimes aiming to provide with the learners a comprehensive view on the topic and the different legal perspectives about the same. The module will discuss select international instruments, domestic legislations, judicial decisions to analyze and understand the issue and to provide knowledge on the existing regulations. Environmental crime is a collective term which describes a range of illegal activities harming the environment and aimed at benefiting individuals or groups from the exploitation of damage to or trade or theft of natural resources. The most recognized types of environmental crimes are pollution, illegal trade in wildlife, illicit trade in hazardous waste, illegal unregulated and unreported fishing, illegal logging and trade of timber. The one of the major hurdles in preventing environmental crimes are the failure by governments to take prompt countermeasures. Ill-equipped enforcement agencies and lack of priority to such instances has added to the issues. The Environmental crime has gained the characteristics of a conventional or a real crime only in recent times. However, the changing magnitude from national to transnational nature of the crime has forced the governments to take action. International wildlife, international environmental crime networks have now acquired the characteristics of organized crime groups. When it comes to environmental crimes, the concept of mens rea is relaxed or diluted. The concept of absolute liability promulgated by the Supreme Court in oleum gas leak case explains this perspective. In this case, the court held that when any person is dealing with any inherently hazardous substance, he is absolutely liable for any consequences arising out of it. The person cannot avail the exceptions provided under the concept of strict liability. And this relaxation in the rule of mens rea has allowed the courts to take prompt actions in many environmental criminal cases. In this module, we would be discussing mainly three types of environmental crimes. The first one, crimes against the forest and wildlife. Second, crimes against natural resources. And third, crimes related to hazardous substances. Crimes against forest and wildlife is one of the major environmental crimes which exist internationally. The illegal trade in wildlife is around 7 to 10 billion dollars annually. The main items which are illegally traded are wildlife species live and dead then parts of the animals like tiger parts rhino horn elephant ivory etc the rising demand from booming economies especially for the use in traditional medicines has also made it more profitable for this international criminal groups to engage in crimes against wildlife and forest the trafficking of live animals also comes under this type of environmental crime. Second category, the crimes against natural resources, which deals with crimes against air, water, land and noise. The main reason for the crime against natural resources is rapid industrialization, urbanization and motorization. Air, water and land is polluted by use of fossil fuels, release of untreated effluents, both trade, industrial, sewage effluents and fertilizer runoff from farming systems, e-waste, municipal solid waste, etc. The pollution consequences are acute and chronic illnesses to human beings and other life forms. Na it also destroys natural ecosystems, it threatens endangered wildlife and create poor quality and harmful living conditions. 
95 percentage of the population of developing countries are adversely impacted from the pollution against natural resources. The third category of environmental crime we are discussing is crimes relating to hazardous substances. Hazardous wastes are byproducts of various industries. Proper, proper treatment of these toxic substances are very expensive and difficult. So the companies usually hand over the disposal to other specialized agencies who secretly and illegally dump these dangerous chemicals throughout the world. Crimes relating to hazardous substances include discharge, disposal or dumping of hazardous waste in public spaces and natural habitats, illegal transportation or smuggling of hazardous waste and the storage or treatment of hazardous waste creating a danger to the public and the environment. Illegal hazardous waste dump sites are actually environmental time bombs and the contamination created out of these hazardous substances risk contamination of drinking water, soil and permanent damage to ecosystems. Now we move on to the next topic that is international law and environmental crime. International law provides a platform for the states to come together and frame a standardized guideline or rules for protection and conservation of environment. The major efforts in modern international law started with the Stockholm Conference 1972 which was the first ever truly international intergovernmental conference devoted solely to environmental issues. This created international awareness, envan international awareness on environmental degradation and prompted the countries to make the prompted the countries to make legislations for protecting the environment and its elements. The Rio Declaration 1992 supported the domestic legal frameworks further in attaining the goal of sustainable development. The major international legal instruments which deals with environmental crimes are the Convention on Biological Diversity 1992, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora 1973, the Convention on Protection of Migratory Species of Wild Animals 1979, the Basel Convention on the Control of Transboundary Movements of Hazardous Waste and Their Disposal 1989, the Stockholm Convention on the Persistent Organic Pollutant 2001 and the Rotterdam Convention on the Prior Informed Consent Procedure for Certain Hazardous Chemicals and Pesticides in International Trade 1998. However, for the purpose of the module, we will be discussing mainly four international agreements. The first one is the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, commonly known as the CITES 1973. The CITES 1973 was formulated to regulate international trade on wildlife. It is a legally binding treaty and currently protects more than 5,000 species of animals and 29,000 species of plant. It encourages the domestic state, it, it, it encourages the nations to adopt domestic legislation to ensure implementation of its objective. It works on the concept of permit. The, the internet, the the permit uh, and it prohibits international trade in any of the listed species without its prior permission. It also states that the parties are obliged to take appropriate measures including penal measures to prevent violation of the convention provisions through penalization and confiscation on return of traded goods. The next convention we are dealing with is the Convention on Protection of Migratory Species of Wild Animals 1972. This is the first international treaty which dealt with migratory species. This is an umbrella convention which provides for regional and multilateral arrangements between the parties to the convention to come up with measures for protection of migratory species of wild animals in their migratory range. The next one is the Basel Convention on the Control of Transboundary Movement of Hazardous Waste and their Disposal 1989. The main objective was to protect the human health and environment against the adverse effect of hazardous waste. It covers hazardous waste and other waste that is the uh, household, it covers hazardous waste and also other waste including household waste and incinerator ash. It tries for international cooperation in reduction of hazardous waste generation, promotion of proper management, restriction of transboundary movement and a regulatory system. The convention works on the basis of the prior informed consent. The state of export shall notify the states of import and transit 
and provide them with detailed information on the intended movement of the hazardous waste. And the movement is only possible when all states have given their written consent. The next convention we would be discussing in the module is Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. Persistent organic pollutants are those pollutants which remain in the nature for a long time and adversely affect the environment or the ecological element or the ecology. Persistent organic pollutants are those substances which remain in the environment for a long time and adversely affect the environment. Persistent organic pollutants or POPs include pesticides such as DDT, industrial chemicals such as polychlorinated biphenyls and other chemicals. It recognizes the potential human and environment toxicity of the POP and stipulates measures to regulate, eliminate and manage the disposal of POPs. The Rotterdam Convention on the Prior Informed Consent Procedure for certain hazardous chemicals and pesticides in the international trade deals with the pesticide and industrial chemicals that have been banned or severely restricted for health or environmental reasons by the parties. This creates legally binding obligations on the states with regard to the implementation of prior informed consent procedure and it also encourages the environmentally sound use of the hazardous chemicals.